So the uh, red light up there on the top left hand of the screen is uh, its a little bit more like Formula One start now. We used to just have a flag, now we have the lighting system. And with the bell tolling in the background, these riders are going to go charging off this uh, start line. Here we go then, the junior race underway and the almighty cavalry charge for the first corner. Very, very important to get a good start. Oh, Ooh. big crash. And there we go, so a bit of nervousness. Big, so many riders crash. have come down on the start and just looking to see who did hit the deck. And who has come down? Well, uh, Max Gulich definitely has come down. Here we go then, Simon, this is what happened. Oh, it's the French guy, yeah. He just, wheels went under him on the, on the painted lines, I think. That was a really thumping crash, yeah. He just hit the white paint. And Tupolik just nicely on the back of that, a Frenchman and an Italian as well. So we've got seven or eight riders, maybe, uh, maybe 12 riders now forming. Oh, another crash here. And uh, hitting the deck there was uh, Sieben Valters. So much nervousness going on in here after that initial crash. Tupolik is number 22. There he goes, he went round nice and easy and then he just toppled over the front wheel digging in. So our leading rider then is Kobe Goosens of Belgium wearing number 10, the rider who was third in the World Cup. And just being, he's wearing number 10 there. Following him is uh, T-Set. And the Italian rider going through the picture as well. Really noisy already in this uh, little area. One of the Danish riders looking pretty good as he makes his way uh, up that climb. And uh, that is Simon Andreasen. So we're starting to get some sort of consistency here as Joris ne uh, Nervenhuis is the uh, Dutch rider towards the front. And Sieben Valt is also up there. So the Belgians now riding a real team game as they go away. Three riders in the front group. And uh, the Swiss rider Johan Jacobs is trying to come across to them. Uh, but suddenly Belgium have got themselves uh, organised and they have their three key riders at the front. Uh, Yannick Peters, Kobe Gersens and Thies Ertz are the riders now who are really starting to motor. It's really difficult on this bridge because there's no traction, is there? It's pretty smooth. You just can't take the speed into it, which is the problem. Big groups forming. So two leaders then, if you've just joined us for the World Cyclocross Championships, this is the junior race. We had that massive crash on lap number one as we go back here. Oh, a little bit of a crash here for one of the Dutch riders hitting the deck. That is Pascal Inkenhorn. He uh, toppled over there. Uh, but uh, these, we had the initial crash on the opening charge off the start line, which put uh, a few riders in difficulty, but the race so far has been dominated by the pressure being exerted by Joris Neuenhaus of the Netherlands as he uh, tries to put the Belgians on the back foot, and he's done that very, very well indeed. Kobe Goosens is the rider with him, third in the World Cup, and these two riders now are breaking all look at that. Oh. <laughs> that was impressive. That was I'd impressive. like to see that again. Yeah. Oh, very. I don't know how his shoulder didn't even touch the barrier. Somehow he just uh, managed to get. Look at this. Here we go. Have you can try and do this at home. And he didn't even hit the bottom feet of the barriers. How impressive. They really are ripping their way down this little. Uh, this little descent, aren't they? they are. But these five second changes backwards and forwards with just one slip, we've seen Goosens now lose, the, lose contact a little bit. Yeah, I mean, when you look at it, we're only looking six seconds between the, the first five riders, so it's still possibly anybody's race as we see uh, Neuenhaus desperately trying to get back across the Swiss rider riding really well today. Uh, Johan Jacobs, uh, he's always been up there in the top few positions. He's sixth overall, and he really deserves to be up there in this uh, in this race. He's been right on it from day uh, from the from the gun uh, happening, and now I think we're going to see uh, Peters try to go with his teammate and open up the advantage. That's definitely putting the pressure on there. We've got another. Ooh. Oh dear, the Italian, Ouch. oh, that really hurt. 
Oh, the Italian rider hit the barriers, and that's Manuel Todoro, who's been running eighth overall, and the French rider went straight over the top. Jan Grass, that was a bad crash as well. That was, and that's what Goosen's narrowly avoided the lap before in exactly the same spot. So will they have team orders here, or will they be told, look, just go for it if you're in the top places? I think the team orders tend to go out of the window on the last lap. Anthony, I think it's every man for themselves. So here we go then, Peters is working hard. t -Sets look. he looks around, he's trying to see whether uh, anyone is coming back to him. Newenhouse is going to be the rider who's going to have to shut this gap if he wants to have the rainbow bands. He wants to have the gold medal. This is it now. You've got to get everything absolutely right on this last lap. So many times in the past we've seen riders win this world championship and as we mentioned earlier go on to big road careers. We think of the likes of Roger Hammond of Great Britain, Boy Van Poppel, Lars Boom, Niels Albert has won this race as well, so has Kevin Powell. It's a massive thing to take to stand on the podium of a world championship and get the rainbow bands and wake up tomorrow morning knowing you're the best rider in the world on the day. Ertz now going for glory. Here's your leader then, as he heads towards the completion of the final lap. He has got the gap now to win the gold medal. It is T. Ertz of the uh, Belgian squad, fourth in the World Cup, winner in Nome just a week ago in that uh, great race uh, that I witnessed. Uh, he's right on form and now he's heading for the top step of the podium. Right, up this little rise now. Those legs will be burning, the lungs will be absolutely aching as he breathes and tries to get to the top here. Peters now putting in a massive uh, little effort to try and get across to get the gold medal. And Sherman's now going side by side with Neuenhaus and another Belgian arriving too. Newenhouse losing the left-hand side there, just holding onto the barriers as T. Sets manages to stamp his way over that little rise. He's got the deep section wheel at the back there to help him go through the mud. Now he's going to come onto this paved road and he's going to set himself up for the finish of this race. What a fantastic effort in this Junior World Championship. This rider has got it absolutely right today. He has used his ability all the way around this course. Is it gonna be a Belgian one, two, three? He sits up, he's ecstatic. He looks around to see his teammate, but the world champion here in Ugaeda is the Belgian rider. Crossing the line now, t -Sets takes the world title. Following him is Yannick Peters, and Neuenhaus is going to have the most desperately disappointing finish ever. Belgium take the silver, and they take the bronze. It's a clean sweep of the podium.